Hi and welcome back to the channel. We're on another morning mission today and I'm here with my XK8 in the middle of the Chiltern Hills somewhere. So I've already driven sort of the 70 odd miles or however far it is from my um, home to uh, somewhere in Buckinghamshire and uh, we're doing a bit of a trip. We started uh, coming off the, the motorway sort of around High Wycombe Way and we're going to make our way through the Chiltern Hills to Bletchley Park. Now this trip was actually suggested to me by somebody in the comment section, someone called Welshy M, and I've heard that the M stands for Mark, so congrats on a fine first name there, and thank you very much for suggesting this trip. Um, another bit of uh, history around this sort of area is of course the Great Train Robbery. Now I don't know too much about this um, particular event, apart from it was a, a big, big deal at the time, um, but someone called Gareth Miles again in the comments, thank you Gareth. Um, suggested that uh, I have a look at um, some of the locations there, in particular sort of where the robbery took place and see if I can find their, their hideout where they, they kind of hid for a few days. And there is a bit of a Jaguar connection there as well, so we'll, we'll talk about that. So I'm going to hop in the car, see if we can find some nice scenery, scenery some nice driving roads, and uh, see if we can find some uh, places from the Great Train Robbery. Right, so I should probably give a bit of an update on this car first of all. Um, the first thing to report on is this headlining. So this headlining was starting to sag um, end of last summer and it's got progressively worse as I've been using the car and um, storing it more recently, not under a cover. So it's been uh, sort of subject to hot and cold temperatures as the sun's got on the roof and everything like that. And it's just totally sort of falling down now. Um, some people in the comments section have recommended a supplier of headliners to me, so I'm going to go with the, the suggestion that they've um, recommended there, and I'm going to order my headliner probably when I'm back from my holiday because I don't want it to turn up while I'm um, away. And then I'll hopefully make a subsequent video about fitting it. I haven't decided whether I'll get them to fit it or fit it myself yet. It's one of the ones which is on a sort of fiberglass or um, some sort of composite. Um, backing so it's more flexible than the sort of board that you'd normally get so you don't have to take as much of the trim out to get it in you can kind of bend it and get it in a bit easier. The other thing is that this car passed its MOT recently which is a, a triumph I'm pretty pleased about that I'm glad there were no suspension niggles or steering problems or anything like that even though you can't feel anything like that but you never know if something's starting to leak or weep or whatever uh, but the thing they did find was a bit of corrosion on the passenger side um, floor pan it's not enough to fail the MOT, but it's certainly something that I need to get rectified sharpish so it doesn't get any worse. And this car is due its annual service um, in a month or two, so we'll get the, the people who service it, who've got a body shop that they, they kind of work with to um, sort that out, hopefully. And hopefully it's not too expensive, but as always, I'll keep everybody informed of uh, how much that's gonna cost and um, the sort of work involved there. Um, I don't think it's going to be too bad hopefully because on that side of the car there's a, a few pipes that go underneath but the floor pan looks pretty simple but naivety there I have no idea so we'll, we'll see how we how we get on. So now I'm just going to continue driving through the Chilterns hopefully get a few um, pics or videos of the car or pictures or whatever and uh, hopefully not hit any cyclists. We drive through here but um, it's a lovely part of the world anyway it seems to be very nice the only thing I'm a bit sort of cautious of is that you can be going down a road like this um, which is narrow enough and then you'll turn off and you'll be on a single track lane I've already fallen foul of a couple of those already and I don't mind going down single track lanes but it's the people coming the other way which bother me <laughs> and uh, sometimes you know if the weather's been bad there'll be um, stuff on the in the middle of the road which you can't avoid or potholes or um, sticks sticking out of the hedgerow which you know are threatening to scratch the paint so hopefully we'll avoid anything like that um, but yeah it's a it's a pretty cool place to drive around there's lots of little villages and stuff but hopefully I'll get some nice footage
So do some research into the, the great train robbery. It happened in 1963 on the 8th of August, but the train that was robbed set off on the 7th of August, um, just before seven o'clock uh, from, I think, Glasgow, uh, traveling to Euston, and it was due to arrive there at four o'clock in the morning. Now, where we are now, the train was passing through here around three o'clock in the morning, I think. And this is where the robbers decided to attack the train. And it was um, at a red signal, which they'd rigged to be permanently red rather than what it should have been, which was green. So the train stopped um, at this place. The gang sort of jumped aboard, whacked their train driver over the head with a, a metal bar or something like that and uh, then attempted to move the train a bit further along the track to a bridge where they had some vans where they were going to unload all of the money. And what, one of the things that went a bit wrong was that they had a retired train driver who was supposed to do the moving of the train as part of the gang, but he wasn't familiar with this particular type of train and couldn't move it, so they had to get the guy they'd just smacked over the head with a metal bar to do all the moving of the train, which is a bit of a short forward planning there. Um, but it was quite a lot of money. Um, I mean, now it doesn't seem like, you know, if you've got like 15 people or 18 people who need a share or whatever it is, of two, 2.5 million pounds, you're not gonna get that much. But in 1963, that um, is equivalent of about between 50 and 60 million in today's money. So there was kind of, you know, a fair share to go between the, the gangs. So it was quite a big heist. And the amount of money they had to move was was quite a lot as well because it was in five and one pound notes. So if you've got 2.5 million quid in quite small denominations, that's a lot of hard currency to have to get off the train and into the back of vans and things. Um, so we're on our way now to the bridge where they did the um, did the robbery, so where they actually unloaded the train. And uh, I'm not sure if there'll be anything to actually see there except a bridge, but kind of puts the story into a bit of context if you know what happened at the site and um, yeah, hopefully make it a bit more interesting. So here we are then, I parked up the XK8 right by the the bridge where the uh, Great Train robbery took place. It's called Bridego or Bridego Bridge. Uh, it might have a different name now. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see over here, um, just, it's just a small arch bridge, but kind of quite a quiet place just to stop a couple of vans, chuck a load of loot off the top of the bridge there into the back of them. Um, I mean, there isn't really much more to see apart from that. <laughs> But uh, I guess now what we could try and do is see uh, see where the hideout was, see if we can go to the farm where they, they hold up and um, reportedly played Monopoly while they were waiting there with the uh, the money that they stole, which is quite a, a funny story. But yeah, let's go there now and see if we can see where they, where they hid for a while. So here we are then, uh, just down the road from Leatherslade Farm, which is where the uh, great train robbers hold themselves up for a period of time to try and evade capture from the police. Um, it's not actually that far away from where the robbery took place and they told the people on the train who they sort of um, told to sort of sit there and not move while they robbed it, not to do anything for like half an hour or something like that. And the police deduced that that means that they must have been within a sort of 30 mile radius of uh, where the uh, robbery happened. So they were able to sort of close in quite quickly on where the robbers were and there's all sorts of attempts to um, burn the place down to remove evidence, etc. And people just did a runner instead of doing it and other bits and pieces. So I suppose it's um, a good idea now to probably mention the sort of Jaguar connection here. It's kind of a bit of a tenuous link, I guess. But one of the, the robbers, the getaway driver, was a, a fairly sort of infamous guy called Roy James. And Roy James um, was known for sort of doing these getaway runs and things, and he favoured uh, Mark I and Mark II Jags, uh, notably I think the Mark I for its uh, slightly um, more sp sprightly handling and uh, the 3.4 uh, XK 
engine, which apparently was a better revving unit than the bigger size. But yeah, I mean, that's quite a cool thing that he uh, sort of had a very distinct preference for, for fast Jags. Um, not that I'm sort of uh, bigging the guy up because he was a criminal. But the other, the other thing about uh, Roy James is that he had a, a nickname uh, called The Weasel, and I'm, I don't really know why, I haven't really looked into that. Uh, but the, the really interesting thing I find about this, this chap is that he um, was involved in motorsport and actually held um, quite a, a good sort of level within um, certain areas of motorsport. And in 1963, the year of the, um, the Great Train Robbery, he was even sort of bettering people like Jackie Stewart at the time, which is quite unbelievable really. This guy was clearly a talented bloke and just sort of threw it away on a sort of life of crime but you know maybe, maybe the uh, pay for motorsport wasn't quite what it is now and perhaps the lure of sort of criminal activity was too much for, for someone who um, who wanted a bit of extra a bit of extra cash but yeah I mean interesting story the great train robbery and, and it's, it's one of those things where it's great that they all got sort of rounded up pretty much they pretty much caught all the people involved and they served various sentences and whatever else but they didn't actually recover that much of the um, 2.5 million that was stolen um, some of it turned up in a, a telephone box uh, which is quite a large amount I can't remember how much it was now but some people say that that was um, part of a deal to save the police some embarrassment of not finding any of the money so they made a deal to say oh we'll just leave it in that box and we'll say no more about it but it was only like I don't know, 50 grand or something, 150 grand, I don't know. But uh, yeah, really fascinating story and, and kind of brings it to life a bit when you're kind of coming down to the area where it happened. And it's uh, it's kind of strange that this uh, place has a bit of a darker sort of history with this kind of stuff going on. It's a beautiful countryside, like really lovely rolling hills, uh, nice sort of farmland and country roads, little villages. Um, but yeah, just amazing uh, some of the history that's happened here. Anyway, on to Bletchley Park next, see what we can see there. Okay, well we're at Bletchley Park um, train station now. Um, I didn't actually go into the Bletchley Park uh, museum there because I don't really have time to sort of pay and go in and have a look around. Um, but it's quite cool to come and see, you know, what is a very important, um, or was a very important code-breaking place during the Second World War and some amazing, you know, minds came together to crack the Enigma code. So it's you know, good to sort of see uh, some of the buildings from a distance um, there. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of the finishing line, but as this is a morning mission, I do have to get back uh, home before lunch, which is going to be a bit of a, a challenge. But I thoroughly enjoyed driving through the Chilterns today and around this sort of area, lovely countryside, and uh, the great train robbery sort of adding a bit of intrigue is into what seems like a pretty sort of normal English countryside. It's kind of amazing that there's some, you know, slightly darker history there and some uh, some characters as well involved in in that heist. Um, so another morning mission done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I do want to continue bringing some of these sort of shorter trips to you, but also want to start doing longer trips again. And I only really did one to Wales, but um, I've got some some good ideas for some longer trips, which I hope you'll be able to I hopefully be able to do um, in the second half of this year, sort of coronavirus permitting. So yeah, hopefully bring you some great content and fixing this flappy headliner to you soon. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And until the next time, see you later. Bye bye. As uh, the great train robbery uh, country, I'm gonna break here as people fly past. This road was quiet 
for like 10 minutes uh, before I started filming. Anyway, 